What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Python with PyQt4 tutorial video. In this video we're going to be talking about the conversion of this to the more typical structure you're going to see which is going to be using object-oriented programming but most importantly defining our own app class which just so happens to inherit from Qt GUI. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this stuff but you'll see the same kind of names that you've been seeing. So why are we using object-oriented programming specifically or why do I definitely want to push it here? So typically the stuff that I do is more more notably like data analysis, stuff like that. And in that scenario, it's not you use a lot of things that are object-oriented programmed, uh, like modules and stuff like that, and I'll explain why in a moment. But for the most part, you can program in line, and it doesn't really matter. And Python is a, is a, is a language that's read line by line. So that's why people use like functional programming a lot. Uh, so why object-oriented programming? So object-oriented programming makes a lot of sense in anything that is going to be interacted with. So this is stuff like games, GUIs, modules, that sort of thing where you've got someone who might interact with it in a very dynamic way. So you want to be able to make it dynamic and object-oriented programming is one of those ways to make something very dynamic yet with not so many lines, okay? So if you're not familiar with object-oriented programming, I do have a, a, a crash course for it. Uh, you can come to Python Program .net, dashboard search, object, object-oriented programming crash course. This one was with T. Kinter, but it doesn't really matter. You can follow this one along pretty much with uh, whatever you wanted. T. Kinter just makes sense, but I would go through this if you're not comfortable uh, with things like inheritance, why we use self, args, quargs, um, parent, children, that sort of thing. So if you're not familiar with that, check that out, methods and everything. Uh, otherwise, let's get started. So uh, we're going to go ahead and first let's create our class. We're going to call this class, uh, we're going to call it window. And window is going to inherit from window. Now, just in my experience, you're, you'll inherit, your main application will probably always inherit from this. Uh, but you might also inherit from Qt widget like we did before, but for the most part, that's probably what you're going to inherit from. Now, uh, first thing that we're going to do is create our init method. So define underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And then of course we'll, we'll pass the obligatory self. And uh, what do we want in this application? Well, immediately what we need to do is to super the window self and then dot underscore underscore in it underscore underscore empty parameters. Now why are we doing that? Well with super what we return is the parent object um, and so our parent object would be a QMain window object so just keep that in mind. And next what we want to do is let's go ahead we'll use the same kind of geometry as before now remember how we did like it was window dot set geometry and then the parameters well now that we're using object oriented programming we can always reference the window with a self okay so self dot set geometry 50 50 500 300 okay so start x start y width height now what we're going to go ahead and do is we'll do the same thing as before is to self dot set window title and again this will be pi qt tuts okay now we can do something else and we can do a set window icon so besides moving to object oriented programming let's add some imagery so self dot set window icon and then to do this we'll use qt gui dot q icon and uh, then you specify the name of the icon. How is it? That was odd. <laughs> I guess because that thing popped up, it didn't finish its little formatting. Um, let me pull up. Let's do here and here. And come in here. And here is uh, where we're, we're programming right now. So let's add a little image. So the easiest thing to add would be like a little Python logo like we have on the website. So let's just steal my little Python logo off pythonprogramming.net here. And actually it's not even my logo, it is the Python logo. So go static favicon.ico, we'll click on that, and there we go. So now I'm just gonna click and drag that. For whatever reason, when I click and drag this, it saves it as a PNG. Uh, so you've got favicon and it's .png now. <laughs> 
<laughs> even though it was an ICO, probably because it really is a PNG and I just called it an ICO. But if yours says .ICO, change it to a .png and it'll be fine. So now this says fave icon. Let's just call it a uh, Python logo instead. And then we'll come over here and then call this. Uh, we'll, we'll do the Q icon as Python logo dot PNG. And then again, we need to do a self dot show. And that's that. Then we'll come over here. We'll do the same thing as we've done before. We're going to say uh, the app equals Q T GUI dot Q application. And again, we pass sys.argv, no different than we did before. And then we're going to say the, um, we'll say GUI equals window. And then finally, we'll run that sys.exit uh, stuff. So app.exec underscore empty parms. And that's that. Let's go ahead and run that and see if this uh, worked to our liking. There we go, We've got a window. We can see that the icon has changed and otherwise it's pretty much the same window that we saw before, but now we're using object-oriented programming. And now as time goes on, we'll be able to modify this window based on events from the user and it will just make a lot more sense and that's why we're using object-oriented programming. Most people I'm sure won't complain, but a lot of my viewers are probably used to me not using object-oriented programming because sometimes it can make things more confusing, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. So anyways, that is our move to object-oriented programming. Now in the next video, what we're going to be talking about um, is really uh, the next thing I always think of when I'm making a window is like, how do I make a button? So <laughs> we'll be talking about buttons in the next video. And then after that, button events and all of that. So if you have any questions or comments up to this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.